As the primary vocalist of his family's singing group, El DeBarge's distinctive falsetto can be heard up front and center on many of their hits, such as I Like It, All This Love, Time Will Reveal, Love Me In A Special Way, and their biggest one ever, Rhythm of the Night. Even though he had his siblings to lean on for support as they navigated the crazy world of entertainment together, El's personal issues that plagued him for several decades and still do to this day were up to him to battle on his own. Singer, songwriter, and musician Eldra Patrick DeBarge was born on June 4, 1961 in Detroit, Michigan, the sixth of 10 children to a black American gospel singer mother and a white American soldier of French and English descent. He, along with his nine siblings, were raised in Detroit and Grand Rapids, Michigan. His parents had a tumultuous marriage that involved domestic abuse and child abuse on the part of his father. Over the years, L has chosen to remain silent on his relationship with his father and many other elements of his family life, as opposed to his mother, Sister Bunny, and Brother Tommy, who have written about their experience in various books. Later, after his family moved to Grand Rapids, he and the rest of them began performing at their uncle's church. Growing up, L was closest to his eldest brother, Bobby, and began imitating his brother's vocal styling. When L had just entered his teens, his parents divorced. It was also around this time that he had begun to express a desire to become a performer. While L was honing his singing and musicianship skills, he was clearly also gaining the attention of the young ladies, as he would soon become a father for the first time at the age of 16. Eventually, he would go on to father 12 children in total, with at least half a dozen women. After a few more years passed, L would move from Michigan to LA, along with his brothers Mark and Randy, to serve as the backup band for his other brothers, Tommy and Bobby's group, called Smash. They were brought out at the request of the producer of the project that Smash was about to drop. Smash actually went through several name changes, such as Hot Ice and White Heat. The group would ultimately achieve the success they were after with one final name change to Switch. As a result of the success of his brothers in Switch, L was given the opportunity to perform live at the piano and sing in front of Motown CEO, Barry Gordy, who immediately signed him and his siblings, then known as the DeBarges. The group originally consisted of L, Bunny, Mark, and Randy, and was later joined by James and Bobby. The DeBarges would release their self-titled debut album in 1981. It saw limited success and stalled on the charts. The reason the group felt was because it wasn't properly promoted. Their next effort, 1982's All This Love, finally gave them the success they were craving, going gold with the help of hits, I Like It, as well as the title track. The group was on a roll and kept the momentum going with In A Special Way, released the very next year. It spawned the hits Time Will Reveal and Love Me In A Special Way. The project gave the group their first Grammy Award nomination for Best R&B Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocal. Though the DeBarges appeared to be a family unit, there were growing tensions between Elle and his siblings, mainly because of Motown's push to have Elle become the primary star of the group. That kind of sounds like what another family act signed to the same label went through. The Jackson 5 were also successful Motown artists and had to contend with the member in the forefront getting all the attention. By extension, that makes Elle the Michael Jackson of the DeBarges. And as the Michael of the group, Elle received special treatment from Barry, who saw him as a budding solo artist. In the end, L was called to handle the production of DeBarge's next album, Rhythm of the Night, without much help from the others. It became the group's best-selling album, with the title track becoming a top five hit in several countries, including the US and UK, and the last DeBarge project L would be featured on. Now with L as well as Bunny out, the remaining members called on Bobby to join the lineup and produce their next album. It would end up being the group's last, titled Bad Boys, released in 1987. The year prior, L began his solo career with the release of his self-titled debut album. The project, surprisingly, didn't feature any writing input from him. In a 2022 interview with Halftime Chat, L revealed that it certainly wasn't his idea for things to go down that way. He says Motown didn't want him to write. And according to the contract that he, as well as his siblings signed, he had to do whatever the label wanted him to do. The album did spawn two hits with Who's Johnny and Love Always. The year before, he made a startling confession in an interview with the LA Times. I'm a nice guy, but not all the time. There are these personalities in me, so many of them. They come out at strange times. I can be one way, then five minutes later, I'm another way. 
So maybe it was one of those multiple personalities and not the real L that ended up having to plead no contest to causing a misdemeanor disturbance after a Michigan woman accused him of attacking her. As the report goes, he allegedly pulled her hair, dragged her to the floor, and hit her when she refused his advances at a hotel. L received just a slap on the wrist to the tune of a $200 fine, plus 200 hours of community service. Three years later, he released his second album titled Gemini. The project produced two successful tracks, Real Love and Somebody Loves You. Little did L know that while he was shining in his prime, growing his fan base, and continuing to pump out hit after hit, the rug had been pulled out from under him. Barry Gordy was selling Motown. To add insult to injury, just before the transaction happened, the founder went on a month-long vacation, couldn't be reached, and left L wondering what was happening with his money. In an emotional interview with Rolling Out in 2022, L painfully recalled the moment. I wasn't getting checks anymore. I got a hold of one of the executives at Motown who told me Mr. Gordy was thinking of selling Motown. So I asked, what's happening with my money? How will I pay my bills? He said, I can't answer that. You will have to wait until Mr. Gordy gets back. You can probably imagine how that ended. No more albums, no more going to the studio. You can imagine how that impacted me. All of a sudden, nothing. L did manage to move on and sign with Warner Brothers, where his third album, In the Storm, was released in 1992. It didn't put up very good numbers on the charts, as neither did his next project, 1994's Heart, Mind, and Soul. While he continued to collaborate on other artists' projects, L didn't release any more albums of his own for the next 16 years. One of the main reasons would become public knowledge soon enough. L was close to his siblings, particularly his brothers, Bobby and Chico. Bobby's death during this time period in 1995 had a profound effect on L. Family members later said he's never fully recovered from it. For many years, Els had a history of drug abuse and legal problems. He stated in future interviews that no one talked him into it. He was just curious and decided to give it a try. In 2001, he was arrested for cocaine possession and was given probation. Five years later, he was again arrested for possession and once again given probation. In 2007, he was arrested in a domestic dispute and was held without bail. The charges were eventually dropped. Later that year, more drug charges and more probation would follow another arrest. L's next brush with the law, though, would not result in probation, but a much more serious consequence. He was arrested in 2008 for possession of crack and drug paraphernalia, breaking the terms of his last probation. For this violation, he was immediately sentenced to two years in state prison in California. He would ultimately serve 13 months. In 2010, he emerged from his musical hiatus with the appropriately titled Second Chance. As a lead up to the release, Elle put on a series of comeback performances and appearances, including one that really brought the house down at that year's BET Awards. During a medley of some of the biggest hits of DeBarge, Elle's voice still resembled the same signature falsetto everyone remembers from the 80s. And no one was more humbled by the standing ovation he received that evening than Elle himself. In an interview with Vibe, he expressed what was going through his mind during the performance. The awesome responsibility that God had placed in my hands to bring love again to the world through music. I felt so privileged and honored that God has given me a second chance. Here I am, 22 years later, given a second chance after all of my struggles and obstacles. I just felt so blessed that night to be able to do that. The project yielded two singles, Second Chance and the Faith Evans duet, Lay With You, and later resulted in three Grammy Award nominations. L has credited his children with helping him get through tough times, but he hasn't always been there for them. In 2010, he met with his teenage daughter Kendall for the first time. He admitted to the Houston Chronicle that he was there for her birth, even held her in his arms, and then never saw her again. Elle and Kendall's mother were married for several years in the 90s and also share a son. Their reunion went well, but Elle has struggled to connect with some of his other children, including one that was put into the system as a toddler and, he believes, later adopted. Elle was in such good spirits at this time that he even told Essence that he was in no danger of relapsing, since the taste for drugs was out of his system. Sadly, that wouldn't end up being the case. In February 2011, while promoting his latest work, an announcement was made that L was cancelling all public dates and appearances as he went back to rehab following a relapse. 
That stint apparently didn't take either since by March 2012, he would be arrested yet again for drug possession in LA. According to reports, police officials believe that this time around, he was actually attempting to deal the illegal substance. He was eventually released on $30,000 bail. L took matters into his own hands, literally, in 2018, when he took a wrench to some guy's windshield. He reportedly got into an argument in a home located in the San Fernando Valley with a man that he then chased out of a house, forcing him to retreat to a nearby RV. L followed after him with the tool, allegedly smashing the RV's windshield. The man called the police and upon arrival, arrested L for felony vandalism. He did spend one night in jail before posting the $20,000 bail. So if you believe with L now being in his 60s, he would have surely gotten a handle on his demons by this time in his life, you'd be wrong. El DeBarge was arrested at 3.40 in the morning and booked for possession of a controlled substance, drug paraphernalia, and having an expandable metal baton in plain sight in his vehicle in Burbank, California. According to a report by TMZ, he was already stopped at a gas station when police noticed he had expired tags. When they approached, they viewed the baton, which happens to be an illegal weapon. That discovery then prompted the cops to further search the vehicle, which is when they allegedly found pepper spray and suspected narcotics. They also found out that he didn't have a valid driver's license. L posted the $25,000 bond and is due back in court in March. His fans and loved ones can only hope that L will be able to find a way to overcome his addiction once and for all.